So let's not waste any more time. Give it up for Joel Boyd! Cut it off. How y'all know my song? How y'all knew that? Somebody told y'all that? I'm serious. How y'all know that? <laughs> that's creepy as hell. That was my, that's my ringtone. Okay, that's creepy. It's the creepiest start to a show I've ever had. Um, how y'all doing? Y'all good? We good? Ooh, yes! Oh, a black one. Let's just get it out there. Let's just... You know, I was thinking it. It's fine. Just, just want to say it before you lean over to your spouse and tell them. Oh, all right, cool. Um, <laughs> I feel good. Any uh, you ever been talk about New Year's resolutions? I already fucked up mine. Uh, I've been trying to get my street creds up. That's where I'm at in life right now. Number one on my list, get my street creds up. Um, it's very hard to do when you look and sound like this. It's very hard <laughs> to do. It's hard to be a gangbanger when you wear glasses. You know, it's just, it's hard to be a thug with a prescription. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> A good combination. Uh, Cause I feel like people can just look at me and just like tell my childhood was just full of too many hugs. <laughs> hugs and choices, you know? Just, <laughs> I feel like people can look at me and can tell my dad was there. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that's funny, I can laugh at that, that's funny. That's just good writing. Um, man, I'm, I'm glad to do a show in front of real people, man. Doing a, Show as a comedian, you do open mics all the time. It's fucking horrible, man. It's horrible because you got to do comedy in front of other comedians. It's fucking scary. You ever had a heckle by another comedian? It's actually helpful. It's shit. It's, it's fucked up. You be in the middle of your set, they be like, yeah, yeah, bro, you need to work on your setup, punchline, format. Hey, yo, have you considered watching George Carlin's Inside the Actors Studio? Hey, yo, your, your level of self-deprecation is making you lose your appeal to your audience. <laughs> oh, man. I'm, uh, I love Chicago, man. Uh, not this time of year, but I do love it. <laughs> the rest of the time. Chicago is funny to me. I just moved in a couple years ago. Chicago is funny to me because it's the only city that talks about, like, murder stats, like it's the weather, you know? <laughs> Small talk to us. <laughs> you ever like, how nonchalant we talk about the numbers and shit? You be talking to your boy, you be like, hey man, uh, how much uh, homicide they expecting this weekend? <laughs> oh, you know they say it might help around the low 50s. Might be around the low 50s. <laughs> oh, okay, that ain't bad this time of year. All right. Yeah. Might play some basketball. That sounds good. That sounds, that sounds good. <laughs> oh, y'all ain't got to worry about shit. We, you know, north of the Mason Dixon. I don't know what the actual <laughs> the line is. Y'all look sick, y'all. Fine. I'm wearing plaid, that's how you know I'm safe. That's how you know. <laughs> Where a black dude in a plaid shirt is like an all access pass. Like it's like, <laughs> I got discounted at Whole Foods just for wearing this shit. <laughs> I got pulled over by a cop, he was like, oh yeah, well, you do, how fast were you going? Oh, okay, you good. <laughs> nah, man, Chicago is cool. Is it me or, okay, this is something I've really been thinking. Is it me or is like every black person in Chicago that's like 35 and up work for public transit? Like is that the name? Like what the fuck? <laughs> like y'all know some of this shit? Like everybody I'm seeing, if that's the case, I gotta get out of here before they get me. I gotta go. <laughs> if you live in Chicago, you black, you just wake up on your 35th birthday just holding a steering wheel. Like what are you like? Drive, <laughs> Drive, nigga, drive. Hey, you were trying to be a doctor. Let's go. Let's try this bus. <laughs> Shit, how the health benefits? That's good. <laughs> oh, man, I love Chicago, man. I love it. I, uh, it's, it's, you know, I, I, I'm a goody two shoes. I had a parents as pa uh, pastors with my parents. Anybody else grew up in a little real, like, religious home? Anybody else grew up in church and shit like that? Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Everyone was like, nope, stand in. Yeah. <laughs> Tuesday night, another round. Okay. <laughs> Now, my parents were pastors, so like my childhood was confusing as shit. It was confusing. Man. I didn't really know when I was like good or bad. You know what I mean? Like when I was bad around the house, my mom, you know, she would punish us by uh, making us read the Bible. You know? um, and you know, there were times when we were good, and she would reward us 
by uh, making us read the Bible. So, <laughs> it's very confusing. Um, <laughs> I grew up in black church, man. Anybody claim you have been to a black church? Anybody been to a black church in here, man? You, if you haven't been, you need to go. Because the shit is hilarious. It's, every week, it's like a fucking sitcom. My favorite part about going to black church is always a lady who gets up to like read scripture and like everybody knows Ms. Jenkins can't read. Like everybody knows. As soon as she volunteers, the whole church is like, oh shit, god damn. Oh, I'm sorry, dad, but this illiterate bitch, this illiterate bitch. <laughs> God damn. She gets up there, she's like, thank you, Reverend. Um, I would like to read one of my favorite scriptures. John 3.16. And the word reads. Charles pulls a glass down and shit like that helps. <sighs> Everyone have it? Everybody have it? Okay, all right. And the word reads, for God so loved. <laughs> Pastor's trying to help her out, shit. The, I know, Pastor, I can read. <laughs> you know, three hours later, she's like, okay, and everlasting life. Life, everlasting life. Um. I would just like to say that I usually do read from the King James Version, <laughs> and this was the NIV, so that's a better thing. You can have this. It's your dumb ass. Damn, Ms. Jenkins. Just thing you, man. I, uh, I'm kind of growing up, have my own little like religious views lately, because you know I'm growing up. Um, I kind of figure I'm agnostic lately, uh, which if you don't know what that means, it just means I don't care. Um, <laughs> It's so nice. Oh, I just don't. I just don't get. I don't know. Some days it's like I have good and bad days with God. Like some days I'm like, damn, I feel like He is there. Like He's you know our Father and shit. Uh, but I feel like people misconstrue the idea of God as a Father. I think y'all are building him up too much. Okay. I think He's just a regular dad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's really only there when He has to be. You know what I mean? Like, the entire planet Earth is like God's daughter's ballet recital. He's like, <laughs> every day he gets up, he's like, I gotta go to that today? What's happening? <laughs> Shit, all right, um, you, you told him I was coming? <laughs> Shit, all right, um, all right, no, I'm coming, yeah, I'm coming. Let me just get a nap here real quick, let me get a nap. <laughs> I think he just sleeps a lot, you know? Probably just slept through all the slavery. I think that's what happened there. Uh, <laughs> he woke up like 1969. <laughs> like, wait, what happened? Oh, goddamn. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, white people take over everything. Goddamn. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a lot of work to fix. Let me uh, get another nap in real quick. Let me get a nap in. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm I uh, smoke a lot of weed. Smoke a lot of weed. That's all. <laughs> Hell yeah! Let's hit up Gino's after this. Y'all want to smoke? <laughs> I've been uh, I've been smoking with white people lately. It's been it's been different. It's been different. Y'all are some funny ass hot people. <laughs> no, I man, y'all need to. I feel like that's cool. Like you need to split a blunt. You know, anybody ever ever need to not read over a blunt? Anybody? Y'all need to. You need, to, you need to get some culture. I feel like it's cool like, when you split a blunt with somebody, you know what I mean, from a different culture. You learn about each other and shit. Like, first of all, it's fun to meet some other white people, because y'all call it pot, which is just cute to me. <laughs> it's just the way it rolls off the tongue. Like, this girl invited all of us to like, smoke with her at this party a few weeks ago. She was like, you guys want to come upstairs with me? We're all smoke some pot. It's <laughs> like, so, what? You know, we go upstairs, and all the kids, you know, we can go ahead and you know, smoke some pot. <laughs> I was like, you mean wait? You sound like a suburban like mom, like all concerned and shit. Just they're they're just smoking all the pot. They're smoking all the pot. Those those are those pots. All my pots and pans just. <laughs> <laughs> I was smoking with white people. It's been cool. I learned a lot about y'all, man. Y'all like to y'all like to watch nature documentaries. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Nature 
major documentary on polar bears. Have y'all ever seen this one? Oh my god. Polar bears' lives are fucking real. They're fucking real. This is true facts. I was high school watching this shit. It's true facts. Polar bear cubs have a 50-50% chance of survival. Did y'all know that shit? 50-50 chance of survival these polar bear cubs. He's high school right now. He wants to see the show. 50-50 chance of these polar bear cubs, right? He got 50 chance of survival. And the mom raises the polar bear cubs single mom style. That combo is crazy to me. Because I didn't know polar bears lived in the hood. I didn't know that shit was... That real thing. Who knew? White bears and black lives. I didn't know that. That's, that's crazy. The polar bear mom, she gotta get the same speech to her babies that the hood mama gotta give, huh? Same speech every morning. She look at her baby, she said, hey y'all, listen, listen, Margaret. They <laughs> still got white names and shit. <laughs> listen, Margaret. Listen, you're gonna have to look after Kreva, okay? You're gonna have to it's gonna be real hard out here for you guys. I know it's been rough since your dad left. I was talking about I'm gonna get some fish and never came back, that punk ass nigga, but I want y'all to know that it's a 50-50 chance I hit y'all, okay? That means one of y'all ain't gonna make it, all right? It's probably gonna be you, Kevin, from a little way. I feel like that'd be a dope ass movie, which I watched the movie. Polar Bear Cubs trying to make out the hood. I don't know what Would white people watch it? That's the real question. I feel like that's the question of whether a movie gets made, like for real. They finish the script, like it's a good script, it's a good script. Will white people watch it? That is a question, that is a real question. You know what, let's put Emma Stone in it. They'll be there for that. They'll be there for that. <laughs> I'm a black actor, man, so I be watching shit like that. Like, man, it's fucked up out here for us, black actors. They don't give a lot of us three-dimensional roles. It's fucked up, man, it's true. I mean, I've been looking at this shit. Cause I, okay, let's, let's try this out. I've been thinking about this for real. Wow, it was hot. Uh, <laughs> If, like five years, maybe we'll just try this out for like five years. They've been making the same movies, I feel like, for like 50 years, right? If it was like this new Peter Pan and all this shit, the same fucking shit. Why don't we try this out for like five years, like a trial period? We'll just let all like the minorities, we can be like the main characters, and then white people can be like the sidekicks. It's like five years. We'll try it out. We'll give, just give us a chance. Because there'll be some different shit. There'll be some different shit in the media, right? Like a black superhero, right? Be like a new concept, with some crazy ass line, he'll bust in the room and be like, bam, yeah, the jig is up. Like, you know, <laughs> something like that. It's gonna be a good script. Let me, let me work on it. You know, then the white sidekick can like say all the over the top like white dude lines, you know? <laughs> he busts in and like, yeah, dino maple syrup or whatever. <laughs> It's everywhere, man. It's in books, too, man. They don't give us no good roles in books. Everybody had to read this book growing up. Everybody read the Great American Novel, Huckleberry Finn. Everybody read this shit. Only black characters in the book. His name is Nigga Jim. His name is Nigga Jim. <laughs> Which is fucked up. Because he probably introduced himself as Jim. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He walked up to everybody and was like, yo, what's up, y'all? My name is Jim. They was like, what's up, nigga, Jim? <laughs> oh, uh, it's just Jim. <laughs> uh, pronouncing it a little funny. Uh, put extra syllables in there. Oh, uh, no, yeah, that's what we said, nigga, Jim. Yeah. Start writing some shit down. Hey, what you, what you writing? Oh, it's a book. Oh, cool. Am I going to be in it? Yeah, I got you. <laughs> Oh, shit. I, uh, I've been getting over a, a back injury, I'll be honest with y'all, I'm kind of, uh, I'm recovering right now. Which, it was kind of cool, I went to the hospital, they gave you painkillers, right? Anybody in here ever taken Valium before? Anybody ever taken Valium? Roll Valium? Valium is the shit. If y'all never had Valium, you need to hurt your back and get you some, because <laughs> Valium's amazing. Uh, I didn't, like, it was supposed to take away the pain from my back. Who knew it could take away the pain from my life? <laughs> oh my God. Like, I don't know how to describe it. Like, maybe you never had Valium. Valium is like, like, if you ever had your balls tickled, <laughs> Valium is like your entire body is a ball being tickled. <laughs> oh, it's great. It's I'm not saying the drugs. I'm not saying the drugs. I am saying you got it. This guy does. Valium's a shit. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to like be more confident in myself. It's hard to be confident, man, with this body type that I have. 
I feel like I look like I used to play flute. You know what I mean? Like, it's hard. Some days you, know, you gotta love yourself in life, man. Nobody will teach you that. You keep that with you 2016, man. You gotta love yourself. I mean, some days it's harder than others. You know what I mean? Some days, I remember one day I woke up, I just didn't like my face. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Those days. I just looked in the mirror, I was like, nah, bro, you look like you played chess. I don't like you. And I, I wasn't having a good day with myself, right? And this lady comes up to me, catches me off guard, because I wasn't having a good day. She asked me for directions to Walgreens, right? And I gave her the directions, which were accurate directions, but they didn't sound accurate, because I didn't believe in my own directions. Like, she was like, sir, you want to get to the nearest Walgreens? I was like, oh, yeah, uh, you're going to go, I think, two blocks uh, north, make a right on uh, Fullerton. I, th I think there's a, a Walgreens right over there. And I can just like feel her being done with me as a person. Like, <laughs> in a couple seconds, she was like speed dating and shit. She was like, okay, next. Uh, <laughs> can we get a real man out here? Uh, where the Walgreens is? And what happens at that moment, a fucking real man does show up. <laughs> fucking middle-aged, like, Latino dude rides up on a bike, right? She talks to him, she's like, excuse me, sir, you're not even the nearest Walgreens. And he proceeds to give her the same directions I did, except here's a bag of mine, because he had a sexy fucking Latin accent over the shit. It was beautiful, goddammit. They were the same directions, but he just sounded like a, like a Latino action adventure movie. It was amazing. He was like, you want the Walgreens? I get you Walgreens. You go two blocks north, make right on for a time. And there, and only there, you find the Walgreens. She looked right back at me, she was like, you didn't even know what you was talking about, did you? <laughs> <laughs> you better be playing Guatemala. Like, how is it? <laughs> you did the same directions, only his made you wet. That's the only difference. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. I mean, it's, oh, it's hard to like, believe in yourself these days and shit. But, I mean, Kendrick Lamar, any Kendrick Lamar fans in there? Any Kendrick Lamar fans? <laughs> yeah. Kendrick is inspiring and shit. I love Kendrick. Kendrick and shit is. If you don't know, Kendrick Lamar is a, uh, a young, like, kind of, like, black power-y uh, young rapper. It's cool as fuck, because, you know, a lot of kids like me didn't have this kind of confidence a few years ago. Bro, he, I feel like Kendrick can rap about anything, and I'll believe that shit. <laughs> and if he can fucking read a recipe, and I'll believe that shit. <laughs> just kind of like, yeah, all you need is uh, uh, two teaspoons of baking soda, uh, a little <laughs> teaspoon of flour, and a couple, little bit of vanilla for the flavor. It's a savior from your sweet tooth behavior. You be like, God damn, kid, I do want some banana bread. Black people have been denied our baked goods for too long. This is amazing. You know, we're, we're getting there. White people, y'all fucked up in 2015. Let's admit it, let's talk about it. Uh, I'm hopeful though, y'all can upgrade. You can become white people 2.0 this year. Let's do it, let's do it together. Cause like, this is some shit, this is real shit, this is a real story. I heard this lady say this <laughs> the other day, this is real shit. I feel like she, this is just like the perfect, just like old, dumb white lady thing. And I feel like she just said it like for me, you know? I was like, oh yeah, that's going in my routine, that's great. Uh, and she said, I swear to God, this is an actual quote. She was talking to her friend. She was like, yeah, my friend, he, uh, he worked on that film, um, what was it, uh, seven, seven Days a Slave. Yeah, he worked on that one. <laughs> it's, uh, 12 Years a Slave, if you didn't catch that. A uh, little bit of a time jump there. Um, that would have been like a great short film. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Have black people all over America being like, yeah, bro, I'm excited to see this film. Yeah, I heard it's gonna be real good. God damn, that was good. That was great. Man. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounded like, like how are, you, how are you a slave for a week? Like, how does that happen? Like, did you just like get fired? Like, what happened? Like, you end up up north and run into one of your boys. You're like, hey, bro, I thought you was uh, working down at the. Uh... Nah, bro, they let me go. Yeah, they let me go. Uh, wasn't really my vibe. Wasn't really feeling it. Uh, yeah, but you know, they still handing out positions if you want one. Yeah, most of those definitely. All you gotta do, matter of fact, if you want a job, just start walking south. They'll find you, they'll find you, yeah. Really interesting hiring process at the plantations. <laughs> oh, shit. White people, let your buttholes go, goddamn. <laughs> Some of y'all are like, I can't, I don't know, it's funny or not, I It's funny, it's fucking funny. <laughs> Cause the way she said it, it just sounded like a week vacation. You know what I mean? Like, like 
know, you know, like all middle-aged couples be like, hey, I think we're gonna go down to the plantations for what, about a week, Bill? You think about a week? And then uh, we're gonna hit Maui right after that, yeah. And uh, we're all gonna uh, backpack through the uh, Chinese sweatshops. That's gonna be, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> I'm just playing. How are vacations, white people? Are those fun? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm, I've, I've been to Missouri. Um, <laughs> oh, man. All right, I'll end on this one. Um, I, uh, speaking of being confident, is, uh, I'm, I'm, I know it's a real topical com like kind of uh, topic, but I, I feel like Kanye is the most confident person ever. And I want to get to that level of confidence. Like, I just want to get there, you know what I'm saying? Like, no matter what Kanye does, it's just, like, cool because it's Kanye. You know what I mean? Like, he can walk in a room and it's just Kanye's room now. You know what I mean? Like, he's just that confident. I feel like he can walk in a room and just, like, do a bunch of random-ass Pacific Kanye shit, but it's just, everybody's fine with it because it's Kanye. You know, just busting, like, boom! Gazy! Gazy! Yeah! Carry around a voice machine with me at all times. Yeah, that's right. You never know when that shit's gonna be useful. Yeah. Yeah, I always carry around a bunch of shit with me at all times. Yeah, that's right. I got my man right here. I carry him around specifically because he carries around a box of doves. Yeah. You ever walk in a room, look around, be like, yo, man, this room would be like so much more dope. Just had a little bit more doves in it, you know? Think about that? I always carry around with me specifically a personal high five man. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I like to be reassured whenever Kanye does some dope ass Kanye shit. Yeah. For instance, I write a lot of jokes. I don't know if y'all knew that about Kanye. I'm a mad funny individual. I'm mad whimsical, son. Yeah. For instance, I wrote this joke the other day. Knock, knock. Yeah. Interrupting Kanye. <laughs> ha! <laughs> you thought I was going to erupt you. I didn't this time. That's funny to me. Good one, Kanye. Yeah. Good one. Good one. All right, thank you all so much. I'm Joe Boyd.